The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. Uh, <laughs> it's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. You know, folks ask me sometimes how I come to be a barber. Floyd, they say to me, how'd you ever come to be a barber? Well, I tell them all the same thing. It's a chance to study human nature. I ask you, where are you going to find more human nature than you get in barber shops? Fella comes in, hangs up his hat and coat, takes off his vest, hands his collar and tie, climbs up in the chair and sits down and relaxes. That's human nature in the raw. So you tell them a story, if you heard one lately, and you're off. After you've been barbering a while, you learn little things. For instance, guy comes in that don't need a haircut anymore than your Uncle Jake that's bald. You can bet that guy's got something on his mind besides a haircut. Like Gildersleeve the other day. Well, the guy was in only the week before and got the works. But here he comes again and asks me to give him a trim. Well, I remember I was working on Dr. Needham at the time. Doctor likes his a little on the long side with no clippers and back. Well, Gildersleeve come in, and the two of them were talking back and forth there. A pleasure to see you, Mr. Gildersleeve. A uh, pleasure to see you, Doctor. Although I could wish that we met less often in barber shops and more often in church. <laughs> uh, you know how it is, Doctor. My intentions are always good. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Yeah, exactly. As a matter of fact, I've taken off a little lately. I'm down to 197. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> yes, for a while there, I was 198. <laughs> Well, there you are, Doctor. Sharp as a tack. Thank you, Floyd. Just a second. I'll get your collar. I trust we'll be seeing you on Sunday next, Mr. Gildersleeve. Easter, you know. Oh, yes, Doctor. Yes, indeed. I'm always there on Easter. Thank you, Floyd. Um, um, by the way, I, uh, <laughs> I've been wanting to explain to you about my contribution last Easter. Why it wasn't larger, I mean. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, we have no way of knowing what people contribute. We're thankful for what we receive. Well, I... Thought you might have noticed. And anyway, I've been meaning to speak to you. Uh, you see, I, I thought I had my wallet with me, but it must have been in my other suit. Because the suit I wear on Easter, well, I don't very often wear it, so that's why... I... But I'll be there this Easter, and I won't forget it this time. I know you to be one of our most generous supporters, Mr. Gildersleeve. And you're always welcome, with or without your wallet. Oh, uh, thank you, Doctor. You can count on me. Now, Floyd, you and I have our little reckoning here. That's uh, how much? That'll be 50 cents, Doctor. The only price in town that hasn't gone up. You're sure you're not... No, no, that's my price. I insist, you know, the price for shearing the pasta must be the same as that for shearing the flock. Well, that's the price, 50 cents. <laughs> well, then... Oh, uh, and the tax. We mustn't forget the tax. <laughs> Render unto Caesar the things which are... No, 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 there's no tax. But at the drugstore, I always pay a tax. Well, Peavy's running a little racket of his own over there, I guess. <laughs> no tax on haircuts. Well, if you're sure, 50 cents and... Uh... No, 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 doctor. Now, wait, Floyd. No, I couldn't take a tip, doctor. Oh, please. No, I couldn't, no. Floyd, am I going to be forced to have my hair cut elsewhere? Well, I don't like to, but thanks. The laborer is worthy of his hire, Floyd. And the artist is worthy of something extra. You're kidding. <laughs> Good day. Good so long, Doctor. Mr. Gildersleeve, I... Oh, you'll be seeing me, all right. Yes, indeed. Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye. <laughs> well, you needn't look at me. I got a special price for the clergy. I'm not complaining. I think you ought to cut his hair for nothing. I would if he'd let me. I never feel right taking money off him somehow. I know. Nice guy, Dr. Needham. Yes, he is. A fine man. Gives you a funny feeling sometimes, though. I don't know. Maybe it ain't him. Maybe it's me. Gives you the feeling he can see right through you. Yeah. <laughs> well, 
climb up in the chair, Commissioner. What can I do for you today? Uh, just give it a little trim, Floyd. Trim? Trim what? I trimmed it just last week. Well, it, what do you think about my mustache, then? What about it? Do you think it might be shorter? Well, I could shorten it. Don't say it'll look any better. <laughs> Well, uh, try to spruce it up a little, if you can. Okay. Now, hold still. Getting awful particular in your old age. What? Huh? Haircut last week. Now your mustache. Must have something on the fire. Keep it even, boy. Keep it even. I, um... I hear where Mrs. Ransom is coming back to town in a couple of weeks. So I hear. Hmm. Um... Kind of jumping the gun a little, getting dolled up now, ain't you? You'll be shaggy around the ears again by the time she gets here. <laughs> Mrs. Ransom's return means very little to me, Floyd, one way or the other. Ah, uh, don't give me that. I'll be glad to see her, naturally. We've always been friends, but that's all. Well, I'm a son of a gun. You must be getting old or something. <laughs> don't you believe it? Yes, sir. When a man starts getting fussy about his mustache and loses his interest in women... Who's losing interest? Well, you just now told me that... There's an old saying, Floyd. There are more fish in the sea than ever were caught. Oh, you've been fishing. (laughs) Nothing of the sort. Would this little fishy have a name? She's not a little fishy. She's a a very nice girl. Young? Youngish. Is she pretty? Don't you know me well enough not to ask that? (laughs) Where do you get them? (laughs) Our meeting was purely accidental. Huh? Huh? So you ain't going to tell me your name? I don't care to have it bandied about, Floyd, particularly in barbershops. Come on, finish me up. She waiting for you, is she? You just handle your business, Floyd, and I'll handle mine. But hurry. Yes, sir. Good. She hasn't left yet. Unless Leroy's practicing by himself. Most unlikely, though, if I know Leroy. Wonder if I could ask her to stay to dinner. I don't know. She's kind of shy. Better not rush things. Darn it, I've got to think of something. Well. Anki, you're home early. Uh, not particularly. Why, it's only five o'clock. Well, I uh, wanted to be around. Uh, supervise Leroy a little, if necessary. Make sure he gets started right with his new piano teacher. She's still here, I presume. Yes, she's here. What are you grinning at? Nothing. Yes, yes. Very important for a boy to get started right, my dear. That's where he went wrong with Miss Roots. Got off on the wrong foot. Well, it is. I didn't say anything. Yes, yes. Uh But she got the living room doors closed for her. Keep people out, I guess. Hmm. So Leroy can concentrate better. It's very important for a boy to get started right, you know. Yes. Didn't know those doors would still slide. They haven't been closed in 20 years. Well, lesson's over, I guess. I guess I might just go in there. Well, it was over. Well. Marjorie, haven't you got anything to do? Sure, if I want to. What are you standing around here for? Why are you? I just told you. So I can keep an eye on Leroy and help Miss, uh, what's her name? You know her name. Uh, oh, yes, uh, <clears throat> Miss Piper. <laughs> Slipped my mind for a moment. Uh, by the way, has she, uh, has she a first name, do you know? It's Joanne. Joanne. I saw it on her music roll. Joanne. <laughs> really, Auntie, don't you think she's a little young? Young? What do you mean? Well, after all, you're twice her age. Really, my dear. I don't know what you're talking about. If you if you imagine for one minute that I... Huh, why, that's the silliest thing I ever heard of. <laughs> Miss Piper? Why, that's ridiculous. Why, I hardly know her. Besides, I'm not twice her age. I'm only... Oh, there, she's through. Uh, sorry, folks. <laughs> Hope I'm not intruding. Oh. No, I think we've done enough for today, don't you, Leroy? You said it. Well, Miss Piper, how is our young pupil coming, would you say? Yes. Oh, I think with a little... That's fine, fine. I'm glad to hear it. Keep practicing, my boy. Practice makes perfect. Eh, Miss Piper? That's right. And watch those sharps and flats, Leroy. You've got to look sharp or you'll be flat. (laughs) 
Oh, brother, is that corny? It, you'll be excused, Leroy, if there aren't more remarks like that. <laughs> Well, I think I must be going. Oh, Miss Piper, don't rush off, please. I, um, I'd like to talk to you uh, about Leroy, about his lessons, I mean. Yes? Uh, now, uh, uh, about uh, Leroy's practicing. You'll be here twice a week, of course. That's all settled and agreed upon. But uh, in between, he'll have homework. Oh, yes, I've assigned him the things he's to do. We got that all worked out, Unc. You don't need the monkey with us. Oh, good, good. I was concerned about his homework. Well, um... Well, I guess I'd better be going. Oh, don't go. Oh, well, I really should. Uh, couldn't we... I mean... Uh, Marjorie, why don't you and Leroy go and do something? Hey, Miss Piper, you want to see my new catcher's mask? Oh, oh for heaven. Well, I'd love to. I got it for me for being so good about my practicing. Just a sec, I put it down here somewhere. You darn kid. I had it here. How could I get her to stay to dinner? How could I put it to her? Here it is. How's that? Well, it's a real one. You bet. You want to try it on? Oh, Leroy, she doesn't want to try oh, it. Oh, that's upside down. Oh. Don't make her much her hair off. Oh, I don't mind. Hey, hey, look at Miss Piper. Bat her up. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't you find it a little uncomfortable? No, I practiced the piano a whole hour in it yesterday. <laughs> hey, hey, where do I get my gloves? Yeah, that's enough of that now, Leroy. <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Piper. The boy is a little enthusiastic. I think he's cute. Oh, goodness, my hair. Well, I'll get you a comb. Oh, don't bother. I've got to go anyway. It's after five. Now, where did Oh, Miss Piper. Um, one other thing. Um, you know about pianos. I've been meaning to ask you. Do you think this one needs tuning? Why, I hadn't noticed that it did. It's a Wembley, of course. But let's see, huh? Oh, 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 oh. No, I'd say it was just about in tune. Why, Mr. Gildersleeve, you have a voice. Voice? Oh, hardly that. Oh. I sing a little for my own amusement, that's all. But I wouldn't want to sing for you. You wouldn't want to hear me sing anyway. Excuse me, excuse me. Leave my come here, friend, will you? You wouldn't want to hear me sing anyway. Oh, I'd really love to hear you. You would? You must promise you will sometime. Oh. <laughs> now, where did I leave my thing? Oh, she can't go. Don't rush off, Miss Piper. I mean, do you have to? Well, they'll be expecting you. You could telephone. I mean, well, we don't want to impose on you, of course. I know your time is valuable. You have lessons to give and so on. I just thought that... Hey, well... Aunt Bertie wants to know if Miss Piper's going to stay to dinner. Oh, oh my... what a wonderful idea. Well, that's very good, my boy. Yes, indeed. Now, why didn't I think of that? Miss Piper, you take your things right off and stay. Tell her she's got to stay, Leroy. Marjorie, come and tell Miss Piper she's got to stay to dinner. Tell her to stay, Bertie. Well, really, I... No, no, Leroy's not the kind of a boy who takes no for an answer. Are you, Leroy? No, sir. <laughs> well, you're all very kind. I, I'd love to stay if I may. If you may. Says <laughs> she'll stay if she may. <laughs> oh. Really, I don't know what to say. You're all so friendly. I, I'm a stranger here, you know. I've only been in Summerfield a few weeks, and to have you take me right in this way... Miss Piper, we want you to feel that you're just one of the family here. Don't we, children? Yes, sir. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be back again after a message from the Kraft Foods Company. Easter is making an early appearance this year. Which reminds me, Mr. Lang, that I'd better put in an early appearance at the grocery, so I'll be sure of having a choice of the foods I want for my family's Easter meals. Good idea. I expect many women will be at their food stores bright and early tomorrow, and with quality foods in such big demand for special occasions, I'd like to offer an important reminder, too. And that's to look first when you shop for delicious, flavor-fresh parquet margarine. There's always a big demand for this quality spread for bread, made by the Kraft Foods Company. And my hunch is that the rush for parquet will be bigger than ever these next few days. You see, with so many of you women serving hot cross buns, fluffy biscuits, and other tempting hot breads during the Easter holidays, parquet margarine is sure to get top billing on many a shopping list. Because it makes all kinds of bread taste so good. 
So remember to look first for this spread with the fine, fresh flavor. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine. Made by Kraft. Look first for Parquet, the spread preferred by millions. Now, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Leroy, you... Yeah, Miss Piper, look. I bet you can't do this. That old napkin trick? Oh, who can't do that? What is it? There. You see? Hello, little girl. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah. <laughs> that's wonderful. Now, that's when it's a little girl. Now, if I hold it like this, what is it? An old man. That's right. Hello there, Grandpa. Hello there, Sonny. How have you been? <laughs> Eat your supper, Uncle. For goodness sakes, it'll get all cold. Yeah, I'll get around to my supper. Say, did you ever see... Miss if... Piper's finished her peas and potatoes. Maybe she'd like some more. What? Oh, certainly. Yeah. Betty! Uh, we have a bell, Miss Piper, but Uncle Mort can't remember it. I can't remember it, and Bertie can't hear it. <laughs> Bertie! Well, I really couldn't eat any more, Mr. Gildersleeve, honestly. Bertie! I, I, did you want something, Miss Gildersleeve? Uh, more food for Miss Piper, Bertie. Another of those delicious pork chops. Hunky. I'm sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve. That's all the pork chops is. Oh? Uh oh. Well, then... Uh... Really, Mr. Gildersleeve, I couldn't possibly eat any more. Well, I guess that's the way it is, Bertie. Delicious, though, weren't they, Miss Piper? They're specialty around here. Pork chops a la birdie. Hamas Alabamas. Yeah? Oh, yes. With one drop of precious sauce distilled from a tree elephant. <laughs> Isn't that stuff crazy? Uh, what are you talking about, my dear? Little Abner. Leroy, I've told Don't you... Don't you read Little Abner, Mr. Gildersleeve? I just love it. You do? I can't get through the day unless I read Little Abner in the morning. Oh, well, I haven't read it very much lately. Oh, then you missed a perfectly wonderful story. This little man wanted to get into the Gourmet Society. <laughs> little Abner? No, no, another character. Well, he wants to get into the Gourmet Society, but in order to get in, you have to submit a dish that's good enough. And this guy's been rejected so many times already, he's only got one more chance. <laughs> Let's just let Miss Piper tell the story, shall we, Leroy? <laughs> Well, anyhow, this little fellow has a wonderful dish to submit, but he needs a very rare kind of pig to make the sauce. Hamas, Alabama. And that's where Salome comes in. I knew it was going to be Salome as soon as they started looking for a pig. <laughs> so did I. Who else could it be? Well, anyway... Say, did you ever read Mutton Jeff? <laughs> I used to get a big kick out of Mutton Jeff. It isn't in the paper anymore. It isn't? Well, it must be. I don't think so, Mr. Gildersleeve. Huh? Well, anyway, he finally gets Salome, and they're going to boil Salome down to one drop of sauce, but they need a man to keep turning her. What? Oh, it's so crazy, you can't explain it. You have to read it. Well, I generally do. Only I've been kind of busy lately. Do you ever see the Cats and Jammers? The Cats and Jammers? Anki. I'm asking Miss Piper. Do you ever see the Cats and Jammers? Well, occasionally. Ah, uh, there's a cartoon. I remember one time their inspector was asleep. And Hans and Fritz tied his beard onto the captain's coat and then stuck a pin in the captain's neck. <laughs> and do you remember the time the captain was sitting at his desk and the kids saw the flaw out from under him? <laughs> yes, sir, there's a real cartoon. <laughs> beautiful children? Yeah. Well, thank you. I love Chopin. When I hear music like that, I almost wish I'd taken lessons. Well, you had your chance, my dear. Leroy, uh, <clears throat> haven't you some homework you ought to be doing? Nope. <laughs> now, my boy, don't you try to pull the wool over my eyes. You had your music lessons this afternoon. What chance have you had to do your homework? Haven't got any. Spring vacation. You oh, know, that darn thing. <laughs> Well, it's your bedtime anyway. What, Hunky, really? I thought you said we were going to have a musical evening. Well, I'm afraid I've got to be running along, Mr. Gildersleeve. It is late. No, no, it's early. But Leroy is a growing boy. Needs a lot of sleep, whereas you... Uh, the discussion is closed, Leroy. <laughs> I'm afraid I've really got to go, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, no. I must. Well, 
Say, how about letting me take you home? Sure, why didn't I think of that before? Oh, you needn't bother. It's not far. No trouble. I'll enjoy the walk. I have a car, of course, but the weather is so nice. Oh, you're awfully kind. I'll get your coat, Miss Piper. I guess this is hers. Marshall Fields, Chicago. Yep. Sam, do I have to go to bed? It's only 8 o'clock. And... Well, you've been pretty good today, my boy. You can stay up till 10, but no later. Come on, Miss Piper. Let's be on our merry way. Really too bad you have to go home early on such a nice spring evening. Oh, it's not so very early. It's almost half past 8. Say, look at that. What? Moon. <laughs> I see they're tearing up the street again. <laughs> you don't want to go straight home, do you? I should. Say, Peavy's Drugstore up ahead. Ever been in there? No. Oh, you got to meet Peavy. He's the greatest character in this town. If we could go in and get a Coke or something, he's really a character. What kind of character? Well, it's kind of hard to describe him. Kind of conservative. If you say so-and-so and so-and-so, -and -so, he says, Well, now, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Really? Yeah, that's all he ever says, <laughs> no matter what. Uh, look, look at his window here. This will give you a rough idea. There's Peavy reading a comic book in there. Come on, we'll surprise him. Hello, Peavy! Oh, my gracious, Mr. Jones. Hey, you, you startled me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I caught you reading a comic book, didn't I? Well, I, I wasn't exactly reading it. I glanced at them occasionally so I can advise my customers. Uh, oh, Peavy, I'd like to have you meet a friend of mine. Uh, this is Miss Piper, Mr. Peavy. How do you do? Oh, I'm pleased to make your acquaintance, Miss Piper. Uh, we thought we might have a Coke or something, Peavy. How about it, a Coke? Well, a small one. I'll have a big one. Although I must say, Peavy, you make the worst Coke in town. <laughs> You're joking. Just <laughs> <laughs> sit on one of the stools, Miss Piper. They're here for the convenience of our customers. Thank you. Try again. Uh, see, they're having a special on spring tonic, Peavy. That's right. Mm. Something you make up yourself, isn't it? That's right. Now watch. I'll bet the tonic's no good, Peavy. Darn him, he won't say it. Mm. What's in it? It's a certain formula, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh? Uh, well, uh, what does it do? Oh, it has various properties. Depends on what ails you. Here we are. Here are the Cokes. The small... And the large. And that'll be 16. Yeah. Here you are. Thank you. Well, you visiting here, Miss Piper, or... No, I'm going to live here. Well, I want you to feel free to avail yourself of our services. We're in the phone book, Peavy's Pharmacy. I'll remember. It's nice to know that if I get a terrible attack of something, you can send me some medicine right away. I'm sorry. We don't deliver as a rule. Yep. Well, then why'd you tell her you're in the phone book? It's useless. Well, no, I couldn't say that. He said it! <laughs> Phoebe, you're a character. Come on, Miss Piper, I gotta get you home. Yeah. Well, I just want you to know that I think you can be an inspiration to Leroy, Miss Piper. No, I hope so. Oh, no doubt about it. I can tell from his practicing. You're an inspiration to him. You are to me, too. To you? Oh, yes. There's something about the way you play the piano that, well, it seems to stir something in me. Uh, was it the Chopin or the Beethoven? Both. Whatever you play, it just seems to do something to me. Oh, you must be one of those people who respond to music. Some people respond to music more than others. They do? Well, I must be one of them, then. <laughs> At least when you play, I am. If I, uh... Oh, <laughs> uh, this is where I live. Oh? Oh, here, eh? Well... It's just a temporary arrangement till I find a room or an apartment. I'm sort of a guest here. Oh, I see. Do you have to go in right away? I really should. Oh, well... Uh... Oh, the porch light's on. That means they're expecting me. Oh, well... Uh... Miss Piper? Yes? Nothing. I just did. Uh... Well, Joanne, I thought I heard you out here. Dr. Needham. Oh, it's you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, yes, I'm, I was just leaving. Uh, that is, uh, we just got here. 
I was bringing her home. <laughs> she gave my nephew a music lesson. Isn't that right, Miss Piper? Yes, of course. And uh, this is where you're staying? Yes. Joanne's mother is an old friend of my wife's family, so naturally she... Oh, stayed. of course. Uh, makes a nice arrangement. <laughs> I hope you weren't uh, worried about her. Well, it's nice to know she was in such safe hands. Such, uh, oh, you bet. <laughs> I mean, you're right, absolutely. Uh, well, uh, good night, Joe, uh, Miss Piper. <laughs> good night, Mr. Gildersleeve. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you. Uh, good night, Dr. Needham. Uh, see you in church, uh, on Easter, I mean. Uh, good night. Good night, Mr. Gildersleeve. She... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for several years it's been our privilege to have James L. Kraft, the founder of our company, join us on our Easter week broadcast. Today we again invite you to share in the inspiration of his Easter message. Mr. Kraft. Thank you. Again this year, it gives me the greatest pleasure to send Easter greetings to Kraft men around the globe and to friends both known and unknown everywhere. The Easter season is a time for rejoicing all over the earth, a time for renewing faith and re-examining the true values of life. Even nature at this time of the year seems to join in this affirmation of eternal hope and everlasting life. A long time ago it was said, know the truth and the truth shall make you free. To find eternal and unchanging values amid so much that passes away has always been a goal of men. And much of modern science, invention, and education holds this knowledge of the truth as their objective. Yet, in the field of the human spirit and moral conduct, it is of even greater importance that we seek out the unchanging truth that it may make us free. Now, truth may be regarded as an abstract quality, a faraway goal to be desired by the seeking mind. But it is also, and more vitally, a living quality revealed in a way of dwelling in harmony with one's fellow men. This living truth was expressed perfectly in the life of him whose death and resurrection from the dead the whole Christian world observes this week. I have been reading once again the story of the trial and crucifixion of Jesus. It is a profoundly moving story. You will remember that after Pilate's interrogation of Christ, Jesus said in substance, I came into the world that I should bear witness of the truth. Then Pilate asked a question which many before him and many since have asked, what is truth? By his death and resurrection, as by his life among men, Christ gave the answer to that question. For only as men are able to live humbly and unselfishly together, expressing by all that we do the truth that is in us, will we be able to solve the great problems of the world today. Only by casting aside all pettiness and selfishness, and by following the straight and simple path of doing unto others, as we would have others do unto us, can nations and people learn to live in peace and harmony together. At this Easter season, let us all witness by our daily living the faith and hope and truth that in us lie. Let us walk daily in the light of a great faith and hold the flame high for all to see. Only thus can the eternal promise of this sacred day come to flower on the earth. Thank you, Mr. Kraft. This is NBC, the National.